He threw her out of his apartment many times. She stole his clothes, music, and towels, stepped angrily into cabs, left the gate rattling behind her. The circumstance brought them together again. He forced his mind to mill over the ways she had wronged him. The time she wrecked a car on a drive to Madison, for instance, rear-ended a pickup. Will, tired and half asleep on the passenger side, not knowing she had been drinking on Xanax earlier in the day. One day he walked out of her apartment into the sunshine with all his stolen belongings, clothes, library books, and tapes, and he swore by his heart they were done forever. Months later, he was looking for work and began to feel out the bars for one that felt like home and prepared his pride to start low. And one day he had himself a drink in Wicker Park while he asked the bartender a couple of loose questions. And it was early evening and no one around but two handsome girls a little ways down the bar. And he made little of it. But one approached him and her dress glittered and she said she recognized him from somewhere she wasn't sure where. Then she looked upon him a while and declared, you're my girlfriends. I mean, you know Cass? And he said, yes. And all those thoughts of her and concern he might run into her came back to his head. This is so strange. She's shown me pictures of you. That's what it is. And I, I was just down the street with her at this resale store. He agreed it was strange but did not stand up or even take his hands out of his leather jacket for her because of the thoughts that circulated in his head. But what was he going to do? But this one was kind and unintimidated and smiled like Cass had told her great things about him. Well, I know she misses you, but she said how things went bad and it's none of my business. But, well, do you want her new phone number? Because she's moved and she would love to hear from you. And you know you could catch her probably. She's just down the street. He held his tongue. The address, uh, I'm not sure. It's Uma May's Boutique. It's right down Milwaukee from here. Only a couple of blocks. I'm sure you could catch her if you left now. I don't know. I don't know, he said. It's pretty messed up. Us, I mean, it's, it's really a done deal. I don't know, but thanks. And he had another drink and drank it quick. and wrote down the bartender's name on the card the girl gave him with Cass's phone number on it. And in less than five minutes, he decided to give it one last chance. He would walk by the boutique, and if she happened to walk out as he walked by, then it was meant to be. Meant to be more than done and gone, at least. He walked slowly down and past the boutique. There were four people in the very front of the store drinking beer and loud. He he looked in and didn't see her. There was a big sale going on and they didn't care to see him either. He walked by and all the old emotions came up and he thought, now it's over and said, it's over. But then he had to walk back past the store, turn around and walk the angled street northwest to the L so he could leave it all behind. And he did not turn and walk back immediately. He walked one more block first, gave fortune and fate a lead, his hands, fists in his leather jacket. About 10 yards from the store coming back, emotions resurfaced because this was the final go around. Then, two girls quickly exited the boutique and walked toward him. One of them was her. He let them walk past and made eye contact with her and suddenly realized his mistake and misfortune and hoped she did not believe until he heard her call out his name. Her voice had all the turbulence of their brief past, and he could not. He could not let it go. The other girls stood aside while they had a deep embrace there on the street sidewalk.